Hello, my friends. Welcome. It's been a little while, but uh, we have a tournament report because I've been to a tournament to play the game Kings of War, which is the only game I play, so that's not overly surprising. And it's uh, Northern Kings GT. So Northern Kings is my favourite tournament, apart from Clash of Kings, but I can't play at Clash of Kings, so I run it. So Northern Kings is uh, far and away the best that I've been to. I really, really enjoy it. It's run by some lovely people. It is very far away from me, not by American standards, but far away from me. Uh, by England standards, uh, it's five games at 2,300 points, and it's up in West Yorkshire. Now, I said that in my most posh voice. Y y Yorkshire, I can't do the voice, and I'm not going to do the voice. So, it was 38 players, and I took my Kingdoms of Men. Let's have a look at them. Here they are. So, I have once again, I have spliced pictures of the units into this uh, presentation. Let's see if it works. So um, this is a slight upgrade on my 1995 list you might have seen. And I tried to take just kind of the good units. So um, Spear Phalanx, I think they are, you can get Knights that are Defense 5 in Kings of Men, but these guys come with uh, Pikes. You can get for 10 points or 20 points in a Horde that give them Ensnare. So Phalanx and Ensnare is very, very powerful when lots and lots of people right now like to take Flyers. Uh, Indomitable Will is the main upgrade you get on Kingdoms of Men Infantry. It gives them a once per game uh, fearless and self-inspiring. And I forget pretty much for the entire tournament the self-inspiring bit. So frequently my units will die uninspired because I forgot to use uh, Indomitable Will the term before. Anyway, I have three regiments and a horde and they kind of look like this. So these are the ones that I play. They are Basileans. This is all, all Mantic Kingdoms of Men. Uh, these guys are Basilean Spearmen. Uh, they, um, you know, renege from the Basilean Infantry. Uh, originally, there was a story around um, a dragon because my monarch was a dragon and they'd all been, like, lured by this dragon, but then I didn't like the monarch, so it's gone. <laughs> so now the army makes no sense. Uh, I have got two other regiments, obviously, but they haven't got spears, they've got swords. And then I have to explain to people that just pretend they've got swords. It all goes on this big display board, uh, which is like a city they're invading, hence the wall in the back. Anyway, stop jabbering about Spear Phalanx, their defense four. Here they are. So then we've got some Fanatics. Uh, fanatic, and originally my Kings of Men list started as eight regiments of Fanatics. I'm down to two, um, and I've given them Elite and um, Vicious. Uh, and they have taken, I used Northern Alliance guys for this. You'll notice this guy in the front here has lost his hammer. Don't know how that happened. Anyway, so no, they've, they've smashed up a market stall because they're so crazy, right? Yeah. Um, so some Fanatics, they're good. Um, I, don't know, I say they're good. They're not very good. They're like the worst Berserkers in the game. Normally Berserkers are like 20 attacks or they've got special rules. These guys are Wild Charge and Crush 1, which uh, is all right for the points. How many points are they? 165. They're cheap. Very cheap. Um, which is why they're terrible. Defense 3 is not good. And then Beast Cavalry, which is like Dracons, but better. So to celebrate that, I've made them out of Dracons. You will notice they have Basilean heads and weapons and shields uh, because of uh, my clever kit bashing. So they've knocked over a building, bullies. Um, so they are like Dracons, 18 attacks on 3 is very good. Thunderous Charge and Crushing Strength. Uh, vicious as well. And Indomitable Will, and I give them the Boots of Striding. So once per game, they get to be uh, Pathfinder and Strider, which is fun, isn't it? And then we're on to uh, so uh, siege weapons. Kings of Men have got a lot of siege weapons. They've got, um, you know, what are they called? Uh, uh, arbalests and um, oh, they, I think they're called siege artillery. And you can have cannons as well. But my favorites are the uh, Ballista uh, because they each have two shots. They hit them a four and they are... Piercing 2, Blast D3. So I think that's very, very good for a 60-point price. It's very, very cheap. Here's mine, made from Basilean ones, again. Um, very, very cheap. Very, very cheap, very throwaway. If somebody comes after them, they're undeniably going to throw more points away in killing them than they will make up. Just need to roll 4s and 5s. <laughs> I'm not good at that. Anyway, I've got two Wizards on Pegasi. I did try a list uh, with just Pegasi and no spells. 
and I was kind of the law reason was they're like Rincewind from Discworld books. They're you know useless wizards that've been sent off to die, just as chaff and token carriers because they're so cheap. Um, however, I have given these guys spells. So one of them here they are. One of them has got um, the one on the left. I think has got Conjurer's Staff and Mind Fog. Oh, I'm sorry, Bane Chant and Mind Fog with the Conjurer's Staff. Um, and this was Chris Lynch, uh, UK number one recommendation. Um, and the one on the right, who is actually a hero on Pegasus, that I couldn't be able to paint another wizard, so I just pretend. Has got Bane Chant and Hex. Hex is is proved to be very good in the past. Um, let's see how it turns out in this particular game. Then I've got the captain. The captain, um, I mainly have. So he's got this kind of sneaky rule where you can redeploy your troops. Redeploy D, that's Master Tactician. Redeploy D3 troops. However, which is fun, and I do use it. However, he's mainly there for his rallying because as you can see, the Spear Phalanx regiments over here are, are th whoa, come back, are 1315 here. Right, 1315 is not good. 1416 is better. And so there you go. So that's my captain. He's got delusions of adequacy here. He's put giving himself a crown. Um, bless his little socks. Uh, so he's he's very good. And then we have three generals on winged beasts, which I believe is the correct number of generals on winged beasts. These are like mini dragons, seven attacks, hit on a three. 14, 16 nerve is poor, but you know, 190 points is good. And here they are. Here's mine. These are the only non mantic bits apart from the wizard. Obviously, he's not mantic, and they're not mantic. Everything else is mantic, so 90 bit mantic. Um, but these aren't Mantic either, so, um, because I, you know, it's, it's tough to find a general winged beast in Mantic's range. So, yep, they're these guys, so they're quite fun. And that's my list. So, game one was verse, uh, versus the lovely Florence. Florence um, and I have been talking about playing for a while, and so I challenged her for this for this match, believing she was going to bring Kingdoms of Men, and we are going to have a Kingdoms of Men off. And then she bought Sylvan Kin. I was like, oh, oh no. And if you listen to the recent Counter Charge uh, Sylvan King review, uh, she knows her stuff. So, this was her Sylvan King list, and oh boy, that's a lot of shooting. I think it was called something like Florence's Shooty Sylvan King, which is true. So, there's a horde of Forest Guard, which I think is kind of mandatory in a Sylvan King list, and they've got Brew of Haste to make them speed seven. And then five regiments of Glade Stalkers. That's five regiments of Glade Stalkers. So they scout, and they've got Elite and Pathfinder, they shoot on a four. Yeah. It's a lot of shots. It's 60 shots, friends, I just did that in my head. 60 shots, Elite on fours. Very painful. There is the Windborn, who are a special Silver Breeze Cavalry troop. And their special effect, they have Wind Blast instead of shooting attacks. Um, and their Wind Blast does um, damage. So yeah, damaging Wind Blast, that's fun. Two Gur Panther troops, because they're speed 10 chaff. Can't say no to that. A regiment of Silver Breeze. Normal Silver Breeze, so just the 18-inch uh, elite uh, attack. Um, a single Bolt Thrower, which is not as good as four or three Bolt Throwers, but it's still good. It's got this weird Null Void boats, Bolts thing, which we didn't use or recognize or remember the entire game. So you can forget about that, but it gives you Spell Ward. There is a Master Hunter who has got Slayer D3 on um, his or her shooting attacks, which I think is... I just think, if you've got an item called Axe of the Giant Slayer, should it give you more shots? I'm going with no. Anyway, four shots piercing one. An Elven King, who has the Shard Blade to reduce him to melee two. Wanderer... Um, gotta be honest, I can't remember what that does. Mm, maybe upgrade to seven attacks, I'm going to say, possibly. Could be. Um, speed seven, very fast. Uh, a bow for 24 in shooting. And Blade of the Beast Slayer, so he is extra two attacks versus large infantry monster stuff, stuff, big stuff, big stuff. So he's crushed three against them, which is a lot. So pretty cheap, 135 points for all of that. An Archmage, who is just literally a Wind Blast machine. He has got Mind Flog, but didn't use that, that I can recall. It's all Wind Blasting, all the time. And Nimue Way Dancer, who has all the spells. But the only one we really care about is Fireball 10, because that's the one Nimue uses. So yeah, very, very terrifying gun line. Um, what's my strategy? Well, 
My strategy is to get stuck in because I have a lot of fast, fast flying, right? Come back. Hello. There we go. A lot of fast flying. So I have, um, you know, I've got my uh, three generals and beast cavalry, right? So basically, I'm going to have to treat these guys as chaff and just get them into glade stalkers while I run up with spear phalanx. I'm going to lose a unit, turn one probably, um, and then protect my fanatics because they will just melt to all this shooting, particularly things like fireball 10. So here is our board. So um, in Northern Kings, this is a three height, three hills height six forest and height six blocking terrain here these i believe are height i want to say height one rocky things and height two walls here and here okay we are playing plunder which is the one where you have five tokens along the middle and then you take turns choosing which one is worth two so here we are with them laid out so i got this side i believe florence chose that side um, and uh, I believe she chose this one to be a two and I chose this one to be a two. My reasoning here is that I want to spread out her shooting across a wide range. So she's going to be going for this one, I think. And then I want to because and then she can sit on this hill and stuff. So I want to be going for this two and this one, right? To try and persuade to be and then well, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I, <laughs> to explain, I went out drinking with um, some fine gentlemen in Osset, North uh, West Yorkshire, um, the night before, and I had a very, very horrible hangover. So I wasn't really thinking terribly strategically. <laughs> anyway, this is how we deployed. So a solid center. All of these are Glade Stalkers here. So they are going to scout forward onto these things and then just pepper me, right? Which is fine. These are the um, Forest Guard. Here's a Gerb Panther, here's a Gerb Panther. These are the Silver Breeze Regiment, these are the Windborn. Bolt throw here, I think this one is the King. I think this one is the Master Hunter and this one is the Wizard. Yeah. So I've got my, um, so I've initially deployed these Dracons here. Not Dracons, Beast Cavalry. I redeploy them over here with my redeploy. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't care about these tokens, I just care about these ones, possibly this one. This is the unit I'm expecting to lose. This is going to go forward with the captain behind it. These guys are going to push forward into these woods for cover. Um, he's going to come behind here and then turn two, I should be getting this general in here. There's another general here. He's going to come to this rock here to come in here, turn two. And my third general will then come across and come in here. So turn two, I should have three generals into this line. Um, I have another regiment here. He's going to push up into this token. I'm going to push them forward, pick it up with these guys, and then kill the Silver Breeze. I'm going to pepper all these with shots here. So, I hope, so the ones that come up onto the hill to shoot, I'm going to try and shoot off with bolt throwers. And then I'm going to just try and hex the wizard all day. Or Numui, Numui, I think Numui is here, possibly. I don't know where she is. From this hex wizard. So, that's the plan. Let's uh, see. So I win turn one. This is the scouting move. So I think Florence makes a mistake here in her scouting because A, these guys are just touching the hill. They can see over, but because they're not 50% on it, they still take cover from that hill. Moreover, these glaze stalkers are touching the woods, but their leader points are not. So therefore, to shoot, they're going to need to walk forward into the terrain to shoot, which means they will take cover on first turn. So this is great. I'm very happy to see this. And then I win turn one, and I push forward as hard as possible, basically. So I enact the plan. These guys, they're not on the hill. They're off the hill. Sorry, the hill comes kind of come like that. These guys are behind. He's behind the hill. We are now here. So this is not great positioning for them. They're not going to quite reach turn two, but it's because the generals are coming in turn two. So this guy's behind here. This guy's here to come in here. So, you know, here's my bait. Please shoot this guy off, I'm saying. Everything else is, is ready to go. I miss with all three bolt throwers. Fantastic work, guys. On to turn two, and I miss with the hex as well. So I have a terrible turn of rolling. It is what it is. So this is how we look. So the first thing that Flo does is move these Girl Panthers up behind. I don't really care because he's not going to be here next turn, theoretically. These guys move over here. I'm very happy the Forest Guard are all the way over here and all my stuff's over there. I don't want to deal with them. They're the only thing I'm scared of in combat. And then, um, let's see, does he move? I don't think anything else really moves very much. I think 
I explained about the nose, and she says, oh, is it all right if I move? So I said, yeah, fine. I move them into the woods. That's fine. So she moves them into the woods. And then she starts rolling dice. And let me tell you, it went well. It went very well. So I have done the maths, because we do like a bit of maths. And it's not wildly, wildly over. But I will say, for this entire first, in fact, for the first two turns, just to preempt it a little bit, there are no bad rolls. Every roll is above average or significantly above average. That is very hard to face with a shooting army because you kind of think, mm, averages, maybe some of them won't be great. They were all great. So this general here is facing 24 shots on fives and fives and four shots on fours and fours, right? All with a lead, all bit with a lead, however, Eight wounds is a lot. That's a six for a waiver uh, and a re-rollable eight for a kill. So bad, but not horrific. Nine wounds here. That's, you know, within... It's high, but it's not overly high. So that is from um, these guys with no cover and these guys with cover, right? And then the, the wind blast doesn't do damage, but it just pushes him back to the king. So... To the monarch rather so that's it is high but it's not like massive anyway um i think the silver the windborne miss almost are they let's say they hit three i think three inches and then the other unit is this one again fives and five but still five wounds on this guy um yeah that's the wind blast and then the other Silver Breeze, on their own, do five wounds. So again, you know, fives and fours. 14 attacks on fives and fours. I'm gonna say, again, you see what I mean? It's just, everything was high. It was good rolls. Um, no crap. Then it came to the nerve rolls. Re-rollable eight. Done, that was 10 and 11, something like that. Yep, and that was a re-rollable seven. Because he's 14, 16, so a rollable seven again done. A waiver on him, and he's not got indomitable will. He's a general, no indomitable will, so he's screwed. And a waiver on them, so they do have indomitable will. But yeah, four exceptional nerve. So that felt very hard, <laughs> very hard <laughs> to my turn two. So at this point, I'm pretty in a bad place, but you know, we do what we can. So push forward again. So. These guys push forwards using an endurance or will. Um, put Silverweeds under pressure. And then I can move far enough forward that the Fanatics can pick up the token but not be on the hill. They're touching the hill so they can be seen, but they're not on the hill, right? This general that wasn't hurt comes forward here so we can get some nice attacks next turn. And the Beast Cavalry as well. Very hard push forward here. This guy is stuck and screwed. And the other horde pushes out of the woods. I'm like, okay, you can shoot me with this stuff. It's a horde, it's 22, 24. It'll survive a round, right? Or oh, not if you roll at like that again, but you know, it'll survive a round uh, and then I should get a charge off. So things should be okay. These fanatics don't like any of this because this general's died, right? So these guys are just can do what they want. And so we're off because they can't stand shooting defense three. They're gonna come over and pick up this token. That's their job. All right. And then uh, this wizard's like, nope. <laughs> Don't like that, off we go. So we're gonna block the stuff up later. Um, and that was my move, I didn't, and, and then I missed all three of my uh, ballista shots again. So, you know, poor. <laughs> I'm just gonna say poor, poor rolling, poor life. So turn two for the Sylvan King. Oh, I did one wound, there you go, way! One wound from the ballista, let's go on the other ballista. Mm. Box throw. So here we are. So now we're into position, so, um, yep, still taking cover. So if you think about the shots that are coming in, we've got 12 um, with cover, maybe 24 with no cover here. I don't know what she's going to do. So she actually moves them. So these guys are going to take cover. So we're going to have 12 with uh, 24 with cover, 12 without cover on this horde along with uh, probably a um, fireball from the movie. Yeah, and then the Master Hunter's four shots. So she's moved these Panthers up really hard here. 
These guys have moved off the hill so that I can't charge them. I think it's out of 10 maybe, I don't know. And then Silverbreeze have moved here and then it's going to be um, the other shots here again. So 24 shots with cover on fives and fours. And then these guys are going to shoot this way. Yeah, probably into this guy. So we're going to push him back a little bit. And then he's going to kind of keep peppering these guys. So <laughs> Remember what I said about how this unit would survive so long as she didn't keep rolling like she was rolling? Well, my friends, 19 wounds. So it's 10... Oh, I can't bother to do the maths. And Florence is like, it's the elite, it's the elite. It's not, you know, elite is good. It's not that good. It's not, not this good. It was really, really good rolling. And... I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm fully open to saying it right now. I was very grumpy about this. I was really hungover and I was not happy. <laughs> Poor Florence said. She just said, oh, I thought this would be more fun. <laughs> and I just went, it's not fun at all. <laughs> oh, no. And I felt terrible. As soon as I said that, um, like Florence's face crumpled. Like, oh, like, oh, no. And then she tried really hard for the rest of the game. It broke my heart. Like, to be the most fun opponent ever. <laughs> And I spent the rest of the game like apologising for being a knob. Yeah. It's very hard um, against shooting armies to just... Your units just melt. They just melt um, with good dice. And yeah, I don't know what else I could have done. Anyway, uh, those guys go from five to nine to another four wounds on them. Another five wounds on them. And everything dies. <laughs> just everything. All three of them die. So I just lose an unprecedented amount of my army in turn two. Really, I have no army on the right flank in turn two. Uh, yeah. So, I gather my wits about me. I apologize and uh, try to uh, find the fun into my turn three. So this is what we do in turn three. So um, this wizard, the hex wizard, comes in front of the Go Panthers just to block them. So I'm height four because these guys could not get out of the woods, right? They're just in, you can see there, but they're still going for that token over there. So to stop the Gur Panthers rear charging them, the wizard blocks them. The captain's here for some. Um, I think he couldn't get much further, but he's there just for rally, I guess. And then I finally get some melee going. So I take um, the general that was wavered back here, who didn't get shot again, thank God, into one Glade Stalker. This general from over the other side comes into the flank of these Glade Stalkers, and the Dracons come into the Windborne window point of blocking things off there so to get some crunchy combat feels good so this unit was wavered for the second turn which means it used their indomitable will first turn it means they're stuck this turn there's nothing they can do on 10 wounds um they didn't die so that's you know that's a positive and so i made the decision that these guys were just going to get out of here um we're very very vulnerable to shooting these guys have got vicious it's going to die so i turn all the way around with my token with the intention of just getting out of there and blocking off with this guy so yeah here we go um bolt throwers are still here still now can't shoot anything yeah we finally manage a hex how exciting so the wizard that is just about to die manages to hex namui Rui. so uh feel good about that this general kills one glade stalk which is good this general has three wounds here which is bad and the Windborn die, which is good. Um, there's no line of sight here, so we're pretty safe. But this is the king with the shard blade. So he is pretty much, he's seven attacks on twos and twos against these guys. So pretty much a guarantee, with elite, pretty much a guaranteed six, seven wounds every turn against them, which is basically them dead in two turns and not flying. Um, so yep, yeah, that's where we stand. Not not great. So into um, Florence's turn three. So the Go Panthers come in here. There we go. Um, whoa, what's happening? Whoa, what's happening to my presentation? Nobody knows. Um, so these guys move uh, through. They come as far as they can. Sit in the woods, don't care, Pathfinder. Um, these guys go off and get a two-point token. Look, someone's remembered the scenario. Extraordinary. Um, a front and a flank on this general, but he already had five wounds from the shooting in the first turn, so I've sacrificed him. I'm hoping that next turn I can come and have fun. Uh, the Silver Breeze, of course, move up very, very hard. These guys decide they don't... The Silver Breeze don't need any help because we're facing the wrong way, so off they go. Point blank shooting at us. Uh, so that's a Bolt Thrower, I believe, shooting at these guys. 
Uh, and possibly this guy. Um, is that the moon? No, that's a wind blast. Why are you here, wind blasting, my friend? Nobody knows. I think it's possible. Ah, it's these guys shooting, isn't it? Because I can be seen with cover. So three wounds is kind of very reasonable. I feel that's nice. It's a low roll. However, you know, Silver Breeze shooting their little pink cute bows at you right in your face means you die. And now I've got Silver Breeze speed 10. Uh, yeah, not great. So anyway, um, and then uh, that general dies from that flank and front charge. Okay, so it's, it's going as expected. <laughs> so many elves. God. So we can expect, hopefully, to take out two of these units this turn. Right, so Dracons, or sorry, Beast Cavalry. In, oh, maybe Beast Cavalry can't fit here because of this wizard is here. So the general might need to come here and Dracons, uh, Beast Cavalry might need to come here, in which case you have to face in a rear charge here. Um, the plan was to put this wizard here on the front of the Silver Breeze, but I might need to block off these Gur Panthers instead. The one small glimmer of joy uh, in this game is my Hex Wizard didn't die to a flank charge from these Go Panthers. Go Wizards. Into turn four. Celebrity groin here. I don't know whose it is, but uh, you're welcome. So that was, yeah, that was a show. Five wounds, still good. As so off we go. So we go over the hill, so it's bought me a turn of grace. Because obviously they can't see me. They can come onto the hill to shoot me, but I might weather one turn of shooting from them. These guys can now come and pick up this token and cover my rear. So, you know, I've got a plan. <laughs> I've got a plan in three points. Uh, we've got a wizard here blocking off Gur Panthers again. And we do what? Oh, so that's what I decided to do. Right, yeah. So, rather than um, send the general into this one, he's not going to kill them, I decide Dracons are definitely going to kill this wizard. Not foreshadowing anything. I genuinely can't remember what happens. But in general, if you charge a wizard, particularly an elf wizard for some reason, they just never bloody die. Anyway. Uh, so I charge the wizard and I charge the general into the other guy. The general, by the way, took six wounds from this uh, little uh, king guy, which is mean. I have moved my king up here to try and give him some rally. Uh, I don't measure properly because I'm not playing well. But of course, if I overrun into that unit, I will be out of rally range. So <laughs> this is rubbish play. Anyway, um, so here we go. And then I decide, so since I didn't die to these Gur Panthers, and also these guys can't be seen now behind the woods, I'm going to now block off the giant scary horde of doom by putting my wizard in front of them. Let's see how that goes. That's three wounds. I believe that might be bolt throwers. Ballistas doing some finely rolling well. I say well. In inverted commas. Three wounds. Didn't do anything. Uh, even worse. These guys were on. What were they on? Can we see? That looks like three wounds. General does what general does. And put them up to seven. So four wounds is about average. What you get from a from a Kings of Men general. On threes and twos. Um, so yeah. Seven wounds. And I, I waver them. Which is what this little dead elf token is. It's a waver token. Unfortunately... The king will now murder me with his guaranteed seven wounds. Um, and we do kill the wizard. Hurrah! Everybody say hurrah. And we overrun into the front of this unit. And then we kill them. Come on, Beast Cavalry. You're the best. And then we turn to face the inevitable, you know, smashing <laughs> I'm going to face here. So we have got uh, three wounds on us, but we are facing off against stuff. I was kind of hoping she would charge those glaze stalkers in. But of course... She does not in her turn four. So, oh, here's a blurry screenshot. Uh, so here's the stage of play. We've got two tokens on the Glaze Talker unit here. There's a one token there. And there's a one token round there that cannot be got at the moment by anything unless these Gurpanthers remember the scenario. There's a one token here and there's two tokens here. So my hope is, honestly, I'm playing for a draw, given my abysmal turn one and two. I'm hoping that these Silver Bees don't kill these guys and then get charged by these guys and die. Um, and then I win, or we get a draw. So, here we go. So the wizard gets charged by Forest Guard in the flank. The Gurpanthers ignore the token over there. Hooray! And come after this token here. Um, and she does not charge the Dracons. She chooses to shoot them. So we have uh, 12 shots for cover, 12 shots with no cover, fireball 10, 
and four shots on threes and fours. So, how does that go? Well, you might ask. Over here, Silbury's come over here to do some shooting. Um, I think out of 13, which is probably a very good move, so I suck. Yeah, and they do nine wounds out of their 14 shots. I'm going to say, my friends, that that feels like a lot. And that's what I'm going to say. Not as much as this, though. Um, I will say, I, mean, I was trying so hard, because I've been so mean by saying it wasn't fun. Even though it wasn't fun. <laughs> however nice Florence is and she's like the nicest person you could possibly meet so nice and really fun and I still struggled with this um, yeah so the, all the bowmen did absolutely balls and then Nimui Wei Dancer did 8 wounds out of 10 fireballs <laughs> I, was, I just looked at Florence like what, what, what am I supposed to do how can I possibly <sighs> 17 wounds on them and they die and he dies too they're dead Dave Dave they're dead everyone's dead Dave um, so I charge my captain into the Gur Panthers to try and hold them off because it also holds off that horde at the same time uh, they get up to 6 wounds uh, they're wavered but not dead uh, he doesn't die by the way that's last turn he does charge back again this is uh, my turn oh, this is, oh, this is, well, that's all I did because um on the other side, you can't see them, but I think was, uh, over here, we're stuck. We're not, you know, she doesn't roll the requisite um, six to kill them. And they're fearless, but I'm out. So there's nothing I can do but die there. Um, so I just pick up one of the tokens with the other guys, I think. Yeah, there, there you go, see. So I picked this one up and next turn I was going to charge them, but I just turned these guys to face, expecting to die and then die here. And so she charges in with the Silver Breeze. Uh, these guys back up five, which means that the Forest Guard can come in and everything else just comes onto the hill for some shooty shooty fun. I'm not sure fun for who. Uh, yeah, so these guys that were my last vain hope to get points take 14 wounds from um, all of this. None of that, actually. Just this and that. 24 shots on fours with elite. Should be like 14, 15 hits and then threes. So, you know, 14 wounds is hot. Again, high but not unprecedentedly high. It's just good, consistent rolling. Yeah, that's what you need if you've got a shitty army. Yeah, 14 wounds and they die. Uh, th yeah, th three wounds, still alive. But the captain dies and the fanatics die. It's turn six. And I've got a wizard left and three ballista. So. I don't wish to preempt the outcome of this game, but I don't think I'm winning. Uh, so my wizard uh, runs away. <laughs> a cowardly wizard should. Run away! Uh, and that was my go. And I and I missed again. I think I know I killed one. This is one Gladestalker. I killed one Gladestalker because they had wounds on them. A lot of wounds. So the blister actually hit for the first time in the game. I killed them. Yeah. And then it was Florence's turn six and everything turned round. And Well, she killed one blister with the Silver Breeze. And she killed my wizard with the um, Blade Stalkers. And then, God help us, there was a turn bloody seven. Another celebrity groin here. If you would like to guess who the celebrity groins are, please send your answers in to uh, Death by Dragons. At, um, don't have an email address. Oh, thank God that's the end of that game. Well, that was miserable. Um, yeah. I had a plan. The plan didn't work. Got absolutely decimated. I got one point. And that was for kills. Let's just forget about it and move on to turn two. I'd like to formally apologise for being such a miserable goit to play. But um, didn't really have an answer for two turns of good shooting and good uh, nerve rolls. And that's... That's how it is sometimes. Uh, move on. Let's go to game two. All right, so shaking myself off from that uh, uh, total spanking. And uh, not even in a good way. Just uh, had a, delicious, a delicious lunch. I, think, I can't remember what it was. It was a burger, I think. And it's very nice. Anyway, 
Um, they always catered Northern King's events, and it's very, very good. I very much enjoyed it. So, um, coming out of lunch, I'm facing the magnificent John Guns of Moonraker fame. Uh, famous John, who I've played a number of times before, and uh, touch wood, he's yet to beat me, he, he says confidently, having coming out of a... <laughs> we both got one point. But he is playing Twilight King, the new Twilight Kin. A brand new army to him. This is his list. So it's a very punchy list, which is... Uh, John likes melee rather than shooting, and uh, I do too. So that's good. Um, so he's got a horde of fleet wardens. So fleet wardens... Melee 4, Defense 4, but they've got Blood Hex, which means they can, once per game, get Defense 5. I think Veterans of the Celestial War, the upgrade, gives them the increased nerve to 22, 24, but they're a Phalanx unit. So uh, Flyers don't like them. Crush 1 and Elite. He's got three Regiments of Mutants. Now, I'm going to say, I think that's too many. <laughs> you could have too, too much of a good thing. But uh, Mutants is the new big bad. Uh, secret source, by the way, that's actually the big bad in the Twilight King list is not mutants, it's summoner crones, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so three uh, regiments of mutants, and he's given them all waiver mitigation, because they've got a, a bad nerve for wavering, 14, 17. But they are melee 3, 20 attacks, crush 2, oh sorry, thunder 2, elite, strider, wild charge d3, and fury, which is just a, a stupid amount of rules, but they are very, very expensive. Um... Thunderous Charge 2 is good against my Phalanx unit, so I like that. Three of those. Two Troops of Phantoms, who are just fantastic chaff, best chaff, I believe, in the game. Maybe Gargoyles give them a run for their money, but these are dash 12 and Gargoyles are 810, so... Um, three, uh, two Regiments of Impalers. So Impalers are the Big Shield unit uh, with nine attacks. <laughs> Six in the front. Uh, still got Wild Charge as well, and then a Horde of them as well with Brew of Strength, so they're very scary. Crush 2 Elite, because they are Elves. Um, a Navigator with the Sacred Horn and Icy Breath 5, which you can forget about because it doesn't take, it doesn't doesn't appear uh, at all. He doesn't use it. Um, but the uh, the um, their special rules, Legacy of Oscan, where they can choose, I believe, for Crone Bound units or Void Touch units, I think Void Touch units, they can choose to Stealthy or Vicious or Spell Ward Aura the sacred horn which increases the size of the aura he's got a summoner crone so his summoner crone um the the secret source to the twilight kin list is that summoner crones can take wind blast and weakness which damages you and those spells uh don't take cover and you can cast weakness into combat so you can cast damage into combat however he's gone with bane chant and hex on this one which i'm not sure about personally i don't think you need bane chant when you've got this much crushing too eh, thunder two i guess maybe yeah, not sure. Anyway, Mikhail, he's um, he's still good. I'm just not sure he's 235 points good. Uh, I liked him before, but um, he's um, nine attacks is very good. He's a dash 17, very good. Hits on a three, crush two, dread, elite, iron resolve, nimble, stealthy, very inspiring. The sword of umbra means he doubles his attacks against I think big things like titans and stuff or something like that. Anyway, so he's pretty good. Don't get me wrong. Speed 8. Yeah. Jury's out. I think uh, Lathiel is better. Everyone else seems to take her anyway. And then oh, and then he has an Impaler Soulbane, who also has 9 attacks. 9 attacks feels like a lot. Uh, 150 points. Um, and all the rules that Mikhail does, but significantly cheaper. Not inspiring. Well, he's inspiring, just not very inspiring. And no Iron Resolve. And uh, no Stealthy. Hmm. No dread either. Anyway, enough shitty shallying around this list. Um, Thirteen units is, is relatively light, but that's because each unit of mutants is two hundred and forty points. That's a lot. Uh, let's have a crack at the battlefield. So here we are. We are playing dominate um, on this battlefield. It's a very nice battlefield. So it is. Um, same heights as before, and it did confuse me, and not in this game, but in a later game. These big columns... Oh, I've used red. That's the wrong colour. Dear, oh me. There we are. These big columns are height 6. I would have thought they would have been higher, but they're height 6, the same height as this one. Uh, whoa, come back. Uh, these are height 6 woods. These are, I think, height 1 or height 2. Height 1 or 2 rubbish piles. Whatever they are, there's only one of them. 
Uh, there's a height two wall there, height two wall here. Um, and uh, yeah, that, oh, a height three hills. These are height three hills. Aren't they cool? I like them. Right. I always imagine looking at them that they're uh, the shield of somebody called King Eric. But of course, they are a crown. You know, first look at the other way around. And we deployed thusly. So, I believe I redeployed one of my generals. I always deploy, deploy, deploy my generals, one at this end, one at that end, just because it gives me something to do at the beginning. And I tend to put the other one in with the kind of the main body of infantry. So I believe I deployed one of them over there and then kind of did all this stuff first, pretending I was going to face off because obviously it's dominate. There's a little white dot that John's put in the middle of the terrain there to show the center. And then um, I deployed this stuff and eventually I, 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 I kind of put everything else back over here because that's where I wanted to be because what we're doing here is uh, the old the old toilet bowl. So looking at John's opponent, this is his, um, I believe his Impaler Soulbane. Duh, duh. No, it's not. That is Mikhail. That's Mikhail there. Mutants, mutants, mutants. These are phantoms, these are phantoms. These big, like, these are actually abyssal dwarf golems, aren't they? But he's using them as, um, what's names? Uh, God, what are they called? Hello, my whole screen is frozen. There you go, we're back. Impalers. So a troop of impalers, or regiment of impalers, regiment of impalers, horde of impalers, right? With brute strength. That would be the summoner crone. That's the impaler soulbane. And that's a turn counter, <laughs> just to be clear. Um... So yeah, so a lot of his meat so Mikhail, who's very scary, is over here. There's mutants and all his um, impalers are over here. So I'm happy for them to face off against this phalanx lot here. And actually all this stuff is going to come around here. That's the plan. Hold him off here. Smack his face here. So there, here we go. And I win turn one. Hurrah! Or did I? I think he gave me turn one. Whatever. It's not important. What is important is that the two generals who I had down here... Because he's deployed against this pillar here, we get to go 20 down the flank and turn. So you can see I put my arc template here for these guys, um, demonstrating that I am out of line of sight. These guys can't see because of the pillar, the mutants behind. So I've now got a general in the back and a general in the flank. I like that, that's good. I've got both of these regiments of um, spear phalanx on the hill, which is nice touching the hill with these guys so I can peer through just in case he decides to go hard forward. My hex caster is here ready to try and hex this wizard forever uh, and everything else just push forwards. I have to I think I I struggled with this battlefield to put my ballista somewhere good because there is so much terrain which is great I love terrain I'm a big fan <coughs> excuse me I really wanted that side uh, so I could put them over here and just have a you know a nice shot here. But uh, John took that side, I believe. And so I've got this one's here to try and shoot at these phantoms. This one is trying to shoot at these phantoms. And this one's just in the wrong place. I'm just not going to see anything. Anyway, boo to me. I did manage to put two wounds on the phantoms, which was jolly nice. And I hexed the wizard. Sucks to be you. This is wizard lady person. Crone. On to John's turn one. And so he pushes up hard on the right-hand side as he would because there's not a lot to face against him as a horde. He's pushed his phantoms at the front, Mikhail's behind them, and then he's got these impalers here. I would say it's very close. So if I do charge into these and I have the opportunity to, nothing is going to be able to charge me for a couple of turns. So he's kind of blocked himself up a little bit, which was, I'm not sure. This is my charge range for these impalers who are on the hill in a lovely place. This is the horde of fleet wardens who are pretty scary but quite far back. And over here, he's decided, and I'm not sure about this, can be honest with you, he's decided to respond to my flyers by moving everything this way. And I think what he was thinking, he's, yeah, there was a lot of, he spent an enormous amount of time on this turn, and at the end he was like, oh, just, just gonna do it. He's got his Impaler Soulbane in the back here, his kind of flyer defense, in which case he doesn't need the mutants here. I think a better move would have been in moving them forward in line with this terrain here, right? So block the side with the phantoms here, have them here with your Insailer, Impaler Soulbane guarding the rear, because they've got nowhere to go. As it is, the mutants are just facing the wrong way. It's very easy for me to just come over here now, and everything's facing over there. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. This is what we look like. 
So he's offered me a nice charge with some ensnaring stuff here, so I can block up all this. And uh, Mikhail's going to be stuck behind. That's going to be stuck behind. So I was pretty okay with this. He did play some clever stuff. So this is the he's kept his mutants at the back because they are vulnerable to shooting, and he's checking where can this guy go. I go here, I get mutant did. I don't think I can get to here. So he's holding me off for a turn there. Uh, I don't know what S means. Super. I think that means. I'm super. I don't know. Oh, I think stealthy. That's the stealthy aura from the navigator. This is the navigator. Yes, this is the summoner crone. So stealthy aura on these guys. That's what's going on there. Turn two for me. So as I said, so this is what I did. Um, Just ignored all that stuff facing that way. I like it facing that way. Came all the way over here. And now I'm facing very, very heavily. So I have got my captain here. Just in case he starts to move things, he can move these phantoms all the way down here, but then he's still going to get charged. Um, he's not going to get charged, but then he'll be facing the wrong way. If he comes turn, turn, the captain should be able to get them. Um, I probably should have kept these guys a little bit more oblique, but hey, can't have what I can't have everything. Um, and I've offered him some charges onto this, which is rubbish, and this, which is also, I mean, it's not rubbish, it's great, but. Um, however, I was able to sneak the other general, this one, all the way over here and turn that way just out. So slightly too far turned with the Impaler Soulbane. Very hard to judge. So he's up there looking down the, the rear and flanks of lots and lots of things, which he likes. And I should imagine my opponent does not. So I took this charge. Um, so what I did was I, I moved this wizard and dropped him just in front of the woods you know slightly turned so that when i did charge these guys in this was enough room for them to charge in and contact this unit of phantoms they could only slide down this far therefore they did not become hindered because if they charged them normally they would have been hindered into the woods uh, hitting on fours means hitting on fives is bad so the general can then come up nice and hard behind because there's nothing to stop him no flyers over here um and I've moved forward these guys. So if you want to charge me, you can charge me. You'll be um, in terrain and you will be ensnared. I've got my, my uh, fanatics facing this way, just in case he wants to come down here with anything. So pretty happy with how that looks. That is a bolt thrower. I mean, a ballista doing three points of damage onto defense six, which is pretty sick. Uh, four points of damage there, but they're okay. And off we crack. So he ignores my stuff coming around here and he goes, go on then. And he moves everything around this way and i've got to right click on this mouse i'm so sorry um so he's shielding his mutants with his phantoms but i was looking at this and this gap is just a little bit too wide because i think in fact he can because he does next turn the captain can charge them he just comes here contacts the corner and slides down so the captain can hold off the mutants on his own uh, while I murder phantoms here. Obviously, if I came just to murder the phantoms, then mutants would murder me and I would lose my best unit. Uh, but the captain can slide down there. So slightly too far out, which is unfortunate. He's turned his Impaler Soulblame back this way to face off against the general that's here. So yeah, a lot of careful manoeuvring here to make sure that these mutants couldn't get flanked by that general. He's given the phalanx unit for my general, which is not good. I could probably get a rear charge, zoink, onto this um, this this wizard, and if I get there, into these guys. But then I'm going to get mutant didded, which is not good. And he's, he's come up very hard here to stop me charging over here. Again, probably a little too hard, I'd imagine. So Mikhail has come in to try and finish off this unit, but he is uh, obviously a horseman, mounted, so he's going to get uh, phalanx. And phalanx isn't great. And then he uh, took the horde of um, impalers into my horde uh, hindered and ensnared so that's going to be uh, a long combat oh yeah just showing the positioning over there and then he hexed me so he hexed my hexer which is rude and took some damage i believe yep so a uh, nine damage pretty good from the impalers considering they were on fives i think that's pretty great but they've got Strider. Have Impalers got Strider? I can't bother to check. I don't think they do. I think mutants have Strider. So that was uh, pretty good. 
Uh, five damage onto these guys from these Phantoms and Mikhail, which is less good. And everyone's okay still, so. Nine damage is a lot on a horde. Um, so onto my turn three. So as I said, so the captain comes up here, sneaks down, holding off the mutants while my uh, Beast Cavalry hopefully annihilate Phantoms. And then because this Impaler Soulbane is facing this way, I move my Phalanx Infantry up here to face off against the um, Fleet Wardens, saying, go on then, you can come in here if you like. I just just don't, don't care if you do. Um, and my General is hiding behind them to jump over next turn. So again, um, this General is just kind of flown. I've done a double pincer, so this General's flown here. You can see the Arc templates, they're out of everyone's line of sight. And this general has flown here, so he is out of my line of sight too. So I'm just kind of biding my time with those generals. He's facing this way, he's facing this way. So I should be able to rear charge something. So if he does take this charge, he's going to take a general in the rear. And even a horde doesn't like that. So I counter charge the um, phantoms. I hope to finish them off this turn so that I can then slide along and block Mikhail for another turn. We double charge. I remember I had this regiment here. This regiment of fanatics was facing this way. So I could still see these impalers. So I slid down and the counter charge with the horde, which allowed me to come forward and in with the, uh, the uh, fanatics. And then the other regiment that was here just came into the flank. So I'm hoping to finish these guys off. Let's see if I can get a Bane Chant or two off from my two casters, although this one is hexed. So maybe she can't cast this turn, I think. <laughs> Uh, that's showing the same thing again. So I did get a Bane Chant off onto them, so I took the flank for the Bane Chant. Uh, yeah, and we uh, blew them up, which was great. Um, very, very pleasing. So although I took nine wounds from that charge, I think that was a pretty good outcome. It's a lot of it's a lot of attacks. So I, you know, and, and plus these ones are in the flank, which hence the Bane Chant means even more. So 30 attacks on fours and threes. Um, that's pretty good odds to take them out, especially with everything else. Um, and we took out the Phantoms, which is great, so slid down. So everything's going pretty good right now, pretty happy. What can, what can possibly go wrong? Loads of stuff. And we reform like this, so this uh, unit is going to get smooshed by something. You know, there's lots of things that can smoosh them. Um, Mikhail doesn't have to charge this unit. He can't really charge this unit, or even this unit, maybe. So John's turn three. Yeah, he in fact doesn't send Mikhail in because he was like, yeah. Oh, that's right. He looked at this one. Actually, it's a flank for him there. So he couldn't charge the Fanatics, which he wanted to. And everything else was Phalanx, so what's the point? So he just backed him off this turn to allow the Impaler Regiment and the... Um, so this would be... Hmm, which mutants was that? It's this one, so he rolled a three on his wild charge. This is a very long bomb charge, but uh, he managed it pretty well, so flanks them there, so they're gonna explode. Plus it puts his mutants in a really good place. The other mutants then came across into this one, along with the other impalers, right? So, yeah, it's gonna be uh, losing some units this turn, I think. And then he did take that charge. So this, in, this um, soul bane, the impaler soul bane, just came this way, I think to use his dread. Does he have Dread? I don't remember him having Dread. But he definitely used Dread. I'm just going to go back. Apologies. I'm so sorry. You're going to have to watch going through all this. Da, 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 da. Maybe if the pictures weren't so bloody big, this wouldn't take so long. We could zip through. Oh, there we go. Hello. That's not... <laughs> that's from game one. Whoa! Oh, no, I've gone too far. Here we go. So... <laughs> Where are we? Impaler Soulbane does in fact not have Dread. Darn it. Maybe he didn't. I can't remember. So, we come this way. So, let's fast forward through this uh, shenanigans. Yep. So that's when I killed them. That's good. They died. Everything's wonderful. In they come. And then over here, right, so Impaler Soulbane comes over for whatever reason. Uh, the Fleet Wardens come for a bit of a phalanx off. And then, um, oh, I did kill the Phantom over here, by the way, but obviously these Impalers. Two wounds from uh, the Captain. Good guy. So now they have no Thunderous Charge. Anyway, they're probably going to murder him with 20 attacks. Off we crack. 
So he gets a Bane Chant off onto these mutants, just to make sure these guys die. Which seems fair. Four wounds, so mutants couldn't manage it, which is really sad. 20 attacks, but it was on uh, threes and fives. Even with Elite, that's very, very poor rolling. That is that is shocking. Um, so six attacks there. Six wounds, rather, there is, is disappointing, I would say, for a horde of Fleet Wardens. Uh, however, not quite so lucky there. <laughs> Flank from mutants. That's going to smush you. And then that guy, those die. Obviously, they die as well. So he took out two regiments in one go. Not unexpected. Now I have to really carefully pick. He also used the Aura of Vicious, you can see from the navigator here. Lovely tokens. Very uh, useful. So um, I need to pick my targets really carefully now. And I have got a bunch of them on turn four. So this is how we go. So I look at what I have here and I decide that I really need to take out the Impalers. So I think... I think, 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 this is a double charge on the Impalers because I've got a flank. So finally my generals come in, so I've got a flank here on these mutants. Maybe it's a front and a flank. Yeah. So I think it's a front from the elite um, fanatics onto these Impalers and then a front and a flank onto the mutants because the mutants are much scarier. The Horde then comes into these mutants. I've got some Bane Chant and some Bane Chant going on. And then a rear from the general onto the fleet warden. So a front and a rear. Really hoping to take them off this turn. And I have one more general who couldn't see anything. So just kind of turns around and says hi. And over here, uh, the captain legs it. And we say hello to mutants with Beast Cavalry. What's happened there? What's happened there? Bolt throwers! That's what happened. These, these, um, ah, oh, I tell you what, I had the turn of my life. Three wounds these guys had from the earlier ballista, and obviously have a nice clear shot from two ballista onto them. And I managed to take them off, which is utterly fantastic. So I've taken off one of his um, impaler regiments, which is delicious for me. We took off the mutants on the left. We annihilated the mutants in the center, thanks to that flank. Um, I think we did a fair number of wounds, it looks like here. Maybe seven wounds onto these guys with the other. Fanatic didn't manage to kill them. Don't know what I did in these guys. Can't see any wound. Maybe there is that's a, probably a wound dose dice there. I can't see what it says. Um, but this was the most disappointing. So 10 wounds is all I got. So 21 attacks on threes and twos. Plus um, 15 attacks on fours and fives. He used his blood hex. Uh, anyway, 10 wounds and didn't manage anything so yeah very sad because that means flank from the impaler soulbane onto these guys and these guys obviously counter charge this general that was sad over here so mikhail decides to fight my general mikhail on general action very very cool and then a counter charge i believe here yeah that's the counter charge and a counter charge there i, I wish i knew how many wounds i did Son. This is his turn four. Obviously. Yep, so the Impaler Soul Blaine makes... Blaine? Soul Blaine. <laughs> it's Blaine! Uh, and it, the Impaler Soul Bane makes short work of that already wounded regiment. Seven wounds from the Fleet Wardens onto my general, but he's okay. And murder, murder time. Lots of murder time. Three wounds is what they did, that horde. And uh, mutants laughed in their faces and then murdered them. So that seems unkind. Um, yep, so there we go. And then nine wounds on these guys. And do they die? They don't die. Wow. I guess they are a dash 15. So he would have needed mm, a six twice. Didn't get it. Uh, and then Mikael really kicks the body of my general. Ten wounds. And then doesn't roll the six twice to take him off either. It doesn't even roll a four. So he must have rolled a three or a two. Was this the first of his double ones? He had several double ones. I believe he rolled... Yes, he rolled a double one. He used... There was a tournament re-roll. He used a tournament re-roll. Re-rolled it into a one. Uh, I shouldn't chortle so unkindly. I think John was very impressed. Okay. Into my turn five. So this is how the battlefield looks. So I'm relatively comfortable now. So this is the center of the battlefield, as you can see. He has a mutant here. Everything else is kind of in the wrong place. That's in the wrong place. 
I've got some, some Beast Cav, and I've got two Wizards who can just go wherever the hell they like, and I've got an extra General. So it's all looking kind of comfortable for me. Um, so this is at the end of the turn. Apologies, I think we were getting a little bit low on time from the look of the clock over here, which is 1.39 on John's one. I've got oh, 7.39. I've got five minutes. He's got seven minutes. And we've got two turns left. Yeah. We spent a lot of time positioning, everyone. You have to understand that. So um, I counted charge. I think I double charged or maybe even triple charged here. Uh, not triple charged. Where did the red one go? Oh, okay, yeah. So the red general over here can see the mutants here, so decides to kind of block them off. So it comes into them here. You can see he's flown over. And we just did a double charge onto these mutants who are already quite wounded. So double charge, probably with some Bane chant going on. Uh, oh, yes. And obviously, that will be a beast cavalry rear charge. And a general front charge onto those. So the fleet wardens definitely didn't survive that. My beast cavalry then turned around to block the soul bane. Soul bane. Unfortunately, couldn't turn my general this turn, but it doesn't matter because I've got him for next turn. Uh, and the beast cavalry do block the line of sight onto these fanatics. The fanatics are feeling good because Mikhail can't see them either. I think Mikhail, well, Mikhail took four wounds from my general, so he's going to finish him off next turn. But I've got these guys who are very wounded. But these guys are unwounded facing the rear of Mikhail, so they like that. And obviously uh, six wounds there on the mutants, but they're okay. On to John's turn five. So yeah, 13 wounds on my general from the mutants, who are very cross. 18 wounds onto my general from Mikhail. And he double wound both of them! It's fair to say... Um, this was unfortunate. I mean, I think he'd lost anyway, if I'm honest with you. But this was really rubbing salt and lemon juice into an already, you know, seeping wound. Yeah. Because even if he did kill them, I was just going to put a wizard in front of them anyway. Or charge them with fanatics or something like that. So it didn't really matter. But however, that is just mean, isn't it? And then to double one that as well on 80, it's just... I mean, he's got the Impaler Soul Blade in the flank. And uh, Mikhail in the front. And he double won that as well. So, and he's used his tournament reroll. So, third double one of the game there for John. Very poor. Poor guy. Yeah, onto my turn six. And it was just like, say hello to my friend Murder and his murdery friends. <laughs> so, I just I just ignored everything and just moved back. I counter charge with the general, but, you know, the centre of the board is here. So, within 12, I've just got loads just loads everything um so yeah i think that was the end uh so what did you do what do we do there who's that who's died there something hmm. so the general died and the fanatics died how did the fanatics die there was some damage done by something can't remember and it's not important they had nine wounds and they're dead and he died. And that is the end of the game right there. So he does kill my general. Um, I move these guys forward. These guys are now on 10 wounds. I just chuck everything into the middle, really. Yep, and that's the end of the game. So, a conclusive victory. I think um, just some position. I think without some of the kind of more flexible tools of the Twilight Kin like those weakness or wind blast crones. The list struggled a little bit with so many flyers. Um, having three double ones definitely didn't help. Uh, yeah, but I do like playing John. He's he's just like very polite. <laughs> they're, they're the most gentlemanly gentleman. Although even that was stretched on the third double one. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, but that made me feel slightly better from the game that I had previously. So thank you, John. And on to game three. So on from one Moonraker to another Moonraker. Uh, this one is Andy and his Trident Realm, who are all frogs. Uh, Andy is an incredible hobbyist known for his ludicrous display boards. And this one was no different. Have a look at it uh, in the next video, I think, when I've got an army showcase. But this was his frog list. All frogs, all the time. Frogs don't go in the ocean. 
maybe they do in Panathor anyway. Um, luckily he'd colour coded his units because I had no idea what anything did having never played New Trident Realm. A lot of frogs, a lot of ensnare, a lot of shooting. So river guard regiments, infantry regiments, so these are frogs. Uh, 15 attacks hit on fours, defense four with leaper which means they can see over units in front to jump and attack you. They fly, speed seven, everything in the list flies, by the way. Ensnaring, Pathfinder, all the rules. You can ignore Ambush because that's just used for Ambush uh, when this unit unlocks. Uh, and then two hordes of Dam Busters. These are bigger frogs, frogs riding frogs. They hit on, um, so this one's got Brew Sharpness hits on a three, but they are all defense five, which is unusual in this list. Uh, they are not ensnaring. So anything in the list that's yellow, and you'll see his units shortly. If it's yellow, they're ensnaring. If it's not yellow, they're not ensnaring. Mm. Nice color coding. So they do have Crush 1 and Thunder 2, which is very, very strong on a Speed 7 flying unit with Strider. Holy cow. And 18 attacks. So, But they are priced very, very highly. Especially when you give them Sharpness and Nimble. <laughs> couple of Death Star units there. So um, then two regiments of Tree Leaper Dam Busters. These are large cav regiments. So the smaller version of these guys. And these are the shooty version of the River Guard Dam Busters. So they've all got stuff coming out of their mouths. That's how you know. The two regiments of those and they shoot this 14 inch 12 attack piercing one steady aim. Oof. 12 attacks on a 6 attack unit. So we want to try and bait them into, into the charge. But to be honest... Reading the list, I was like, I don't know what anything does. I'm just going to push it forward and hit you. Uh, two Tidal Swarms. I recognize them. They've got Scout and Ensnare. The most durable, one of the most durable chaps in the game, despite Defense 2. Their Dash 12 Nerve and Ensnare means they do live longer than you'd think for 70 points. A Thule Acromage, who has an aura of Wild Charge plus one, which becomes incredibly important later in the game. I was doing spoilers. And the Loot and Host Shadow Beast, which he doesn't use uh, in this game, although he apparently used it previously. He just uses Bane Chant a lot and that bloody Wild Charge aura. Um, two heroes. These are River Guard Sentinels. So they're infantry heroes. They have a 12-inch piercing one, five attack, shooting attack. But critically, they have an aura of Vicious for Amphibians, which is the whole bloody list, apart from the Tyrus one. Um, they also have Duelist and Fly and Inspiring. And all the rules for 125 points. Uh, Dam Buster Sentinel, so this is a monster hero, who has Poison Frogs. Poison Frogs. I can't remember what it does. It's probably unimportant. Um, and loads of stuff. Just, just rules. He has many rules. They all have many rules. And then I believe this is the formation. Yeah, F, formation. So two troops of river guards. So the same as these guys. Ensnaring. Yeah, ensnaring with their 11 13. Uh, and they get all the rules. Um, two troops of those. And then uh, another regiment of dam busters. And these guys have got an aura of stealthy. And there they've got, you can see these are more dam busters. Um, They've got a big thing on their base, so you can tell which one's which. That's a stealthy aura that they have. So yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots of rules. Lots to get your head around, more for me. Hold the line is the scenario we're playing. That's the one where you have a six-inch in, six band down the middle of the battlefield. Straight lines, obviously not like that. Like that. This one is worth three, and each end is worth two. Yep, and this is our battlefield. Same heights as previously. Let me just say it again. All right, fine. Height six, height six, height six, height six, height six. These guys are forests. These guys are blocking. Um, we have a height mm, zero, maybe. Lake or one. Can't remember. And then a height three hill. And their walls. Oh, their fences. Whatever. Height two fences. Okay. And so we deploy thusly. So he deploys very heavily on the right with a little bit on the left. And I deployed very heavily on the left. I did... I can't remember if I redeployed anything. Do I redeploy? No. I don't. I think about it and I was just, I was just like, ah, oh, I can't be bothered. So you see, I've got one general on each flank. 
And then all my infantry, I think I did redeploy one infantry regiment. I had an infantry regiment here while he was deploying to encourage him to employ more. And then I redeployed it over here. Yes, I did. Um, and these fanatics behind, so these are all my ensnaring guys. There's the captain, there's the beast captain, there's the general. So I'm going to try and overwhelm these guys and swing round. He's going to try and overwhelm these guys and swing round. I'm going to blister him constantly. I've got both wizards here. Why well, have got both wizards there? What's got? What can I hex? Dun, 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 not a lot. Pretty much nothing apart from the loot guy. Yeah. So I think I was going to try and um, mind fog off one of the tidal swarms. This is a tidal swarm here. And I've got these guys here to kind of come up in here as well. So yeah. Classic old face off. So looking at Andy's list, um, getting nice and close. Here we go. Oh, blurry photo. I do apologize. Beautifully painted, lovely, lovely basing. So here is a tidal swarm. This is a this is one of the shooty regiments, whatever they're called, tree leaper dam busters. This is the dam buster horde. Uh, one of them's got nimble. One of them's got sharpness. This is sharpness, nimble, I think. This is the guys with the aura. You can see the little thing on them. That's good. Um. <laughs> You can see how I, I struggled. I'm struggling now. I'm, I'm, it's not too long ago. It's really hard to remember what's what. This is one of the troops of Riverguard. That might be the um, Sentinel. These are the heroes with the vicious aura. And these are the Riverguard. Maybe. I am struggling. Two regiments of River Guard. Two troops of River Guard. Hello. So. Here's a troop of River Guard. Um. No, that's not a troop of River Guard, is it? That's one of the Dam Buster things. Gosh, this is terribly difficult. I'm so sorry. I think this is the Dam Buster Regiment. Must be. Maybe. Mm. Dam Buster Hall, Dam Buster Regiment, Regiment, Sentinel. Where's the Sentinel? Yeah, that's the Sentinel. Troop of River Guard. Tidal Swarm. Regiment of River Guard. But that looks like a regiment of River Guard as well. I don't bloody know. Well, there's the other regiment. That's a troop. Christ knows. Frogs. Lots of frogs anyway. And he did some scouting. There's his scouting. Have a nice day. And then he wins turn one. Off he goes. So. These guys look like dam busters that shoot. Because there's shooting going on. So shooting dam busters and a river guard troop. That's one of the heroes. Which hero is it? Uh, Sentinel, Sentinel, Aquamage. That's maybe the Aquamage. Yeah. Possibly. No, that's not the Aquamage. It's one of the Sentinels. So one of the other guys over here. Um, one. That's the Aquamage. This is the Aquamage. That's another Sentinel. Because Sentinels fly. Okay. So that was his moves. And no shooting. He just cracked straight into mine. So. Um. This is what it looked like on this side. So very hard push far forward on this side. Because um, he can, because he flies. Everything's very, very fierce. Um, he's trying to cover his back here. There's lots of, you know, this general is like, oh boy, not good. And he's come very hard. And so, you know, real fast push forward. You can see I've measured out here their charges um, to see where I can get to. So, unfortunately, with all that movement, he did miss that my general could just literally go forward 20 and turn. And you can see, see his big, big grumpy elbow on the table. Ugh! <laughs> they missed it. But he's only he's not going to last long. It's all that shooting. So he's out there. Over here, I take a little bit more pragmatic approach. I just kind of push forward quite gently. Keep my general here. I'm hoping he can kind of pop, pop over next time. And I'm going to start shooting some shots. This wizard has just booked it out of there because... She doesn't want to be anywhere. She doesn't want to be anywhere near all that. And everything else is just pushing. This is my turn two. Uh, turn one, that's my turn one rather. And then what else did I do? Where's the other general? 
And on the other side, where... Oh, there you go. So I just kind of um, move my general back a little bit like that. So this is his turn two now, right? So um, my other general is, is covering my flank over here just in case he flies this way, which he actually does. All right, so into Andy's turn two. Um, this is how he responds. So he just kind of shores up his line here. He keeps these guys in the back as a kind of a flyer defense because he can quite clearly see that my general could just fly here. He doesn't want that. Um, he's responded to this flyer in the back, so he has turned himself around with these guys. He's looked at that and thought, that's probably enough to deal with it. These guys are covering the back. I've got um, a sentinel. That's not, that's the Aquamage. There's the River Guard Sentinel covering the back flank. Um, and this guy, rather than deal with my flyer, has said, right, if you want to put a flyer in the back of my lines, I'm going to do the same to you. So he flies all the way over here, looking down here ready to disrupt things so these guys are all facing this way to my general these guys are coming down this way so he's gone out the double with these and he's come down here so he's really just saying right you know i'm going to come deal with your war machines and then just eat your flanks which seems good so down here he's come hard down here uh, he's got his flyers his um dam buster shooty shooty dam buster people here and he's got his little hero here m facing off so I think I've got the chance here to kind of um, make good on this. I just need to clear these guys off very, very quickly. Hopefully in one turn. Let's see. That's shooting. Wow. He had a great round of shooting there from these guys. 12 attacks on fours and then threes. Seven wounds is pretty great. Um, and they were wavered, but I have got Indomitable Will, so it doesn't matter. Another wound there onto my general. This is the general in the back of the field. So just one wound from all that shooting. So that's lucky. And then into my turn. So then I decide to uh, just uh, go away. <laughs> I'm like, no thanks. Don't want to play with that. So this is really a distraction game. We're using him. 190 point distraction to get as much of his stuff as possible to follow him. So I'm playing there. Playing a game there. And then I decide that I'm going to uh, ignore this guy. Can't do anything about him. I do turn these fanatics to have a look just in case he comes up this way. Um, and we take a general and my... Oh, no, the general doesn't come in. The general comes and hides here. I think he might be facing this way. Not sure. Uh, we just take the beast cav into this regiment. Or these... Um, they're actually the uh, tidal swarm, aren't they? Using my boots of striding to try and take them out in a single go. Let's see if I can. Yep, and that's just uh, everything hiding behind the woods so this duelist guy can't get my captain. <laughs> um, and then I've, I've decided that on the left-hand side, I've got enough stuff over here. So my horde and regiment are coming this way. I've kept my fanatics here on the hill. My general's gone into the uh, river guard and I've taken this regiment off the hill into the dam busters. They will probably die on the count of charge. However, I've then got my fanatics to finish them off. That's the idea. So I use their indulgence will. Unfortunately, uh, didn't do very well. General did two wounds here, and their regiment did seven wounds, which is a lot for them. But we didn't manage to do anything exciting to them. I did, however, manage to kill the Tyler Swarm, and I then overran. Did I overrun? No, I just stayed there. I backed up, actually, by the look of it. I backed up just enough so the general was... Um, not sticking out so it couldn't get charged. Dan Buster's coming to a war machine. Not so much to kill it, more to position, I believe. And then these yeah, these fast flying frogs, they're a nightmare. Just straight in, straight in. So I'm going to have to tussle with them with fanatics. And then obviously the uh, little river guard guy, hero, whatever he's called, came into the other war machine to try and take that out. Stop me shooting at stuff. I don't think I shot anything particularly exciting. General over here is being chased down by two units of shooters. Don't like that. And these guys come over here. So now my options are running out because he's got a great big charge ranges here. There's not a lot of places I can go to to run away. Assuming I survived the shooting this turn. He's got these guys here as well. So, yep. Yeah. Counter charges. Did they happen? Looks like no wounds on these guys. Very poor. So no wounds on my general. Um, so he can just fly off if he wants to. And it looks like no wounds here as well, which seems 
crazy. But there you go. Uh, shooting, so another one wound, another poor round of shooting on this general, so that's good. Ah, okay, no, it was obviously more than one wound. Anyway, these guys died. Wah, wah. So there you go. There you go, there you go. I just haven't done the wounds yet. It was some wounds, three wounds on my general, so general was wounded, so it's not going well on that side, actually. Uh, murdered a ballista, of course, and turned around. And murdered another ballista, so yeah. And then he, it looks like he uh, moved three. So he sides or backed up three. Right, so into my turn three. So yeah, enact the plan. Keep on slashing away at stuff. Of course, these guys have been snaring, which is why the general is struggling. He's only got seven attacks. These guys are not ensnaring, so hopefully I will not struggle. So yeah, so we take out this unit here and uh, overrun. So I count this. This is um, out of 14. So the Dambusters can't charge me. Uh, I do come in here. I don't know how many wounds I've done there. I don't think I've put it in yet. This general continues to run away like the coward that he is. Legend. Uh, this general, by the way, that's his base. He just comes off to make space. Everything else is just coming forward. Because I'm reasonably confident I will win that side. Which means I just get that segment, right? Which means I really need to focus on claiming the center. So looking at this board, I was really glad that he deployed so heavily over here because this rock is a massive problem for him claiming the center if I can if I can kind of be there very solidly. And that's a lot of infantry, a lot of ensnaring infantry. So yeah, we kill the Dambusters and turn around. This hero may attack me now, but I'm not that bothered by it and he's not mighty, so I can then murder these guys because they're not going to kill my general, I hope. Uh, seven wounds there, which is pretty great. But we are elite fanatics, so, you know, into Andy's turn four. So he looks at this situation and goes, yep, the, <laughs> the left is lost. So the hero decides to leg it, which is uh, sensible. Over here, this was my error. So you will notice my Beast Cav are being rear charged by Dam Busters. But I said they were out of charge range. Do you remember me saying that just now? I was acting. Did you like it? This guy, <laughs> this guy has an aura of wild charge. So I didn't think, you know, great move, got to say. Um, so Andy looked at this, this is uh, 15 inches away. So this guy moves 12. So the aura of six is just in the damn buses. They get wild charge one, boing into the rear. Ouch, so painful. So yeah, into the rear they come. Didn't like that. Everything else is coming around. Can keep on shooting my general. He decided to just ignore him now, which is probably fair. Um, so that's the same shot twice. Um, and then the Tidal Swarm take out another Ballista, which is rude. Killed by Tidal Swarm. Is there is there a more ignoble death? You know, woodland Critters, maybe. Um, so, yep. So um, you see here that this is the other hero that just finished off a Ballista here. And these river guards, so they counter charge and fresh charge in the flank of my fanatics. Defense three does not last long, so they die. But these guys got seven wounds, so hopefully they'll die pretty quick. Obviously murders my beast cavalry. That's unfortunate. And now there's Dambusters right in the center of the board where I don't want them. Into my turn four? Turn four? We're on just on turn four. So uh, the general wasn't wounded. That's the turn that he wasn't wounded. So I do remember things sometimes. Still on three wounds. And I make a strategic error here. So on my turn three. So we take the regiment and the general into the front of these Dambusters. They're on four wounds. Going to try and take them out. And then line up my horde behind lots of, and this uh, wizard to give them some Bane Chant. We've got a nice a Bane Chanted flank here onto these um, River Guard. Oh, it's a front. I'm sorry, it's not a front, it's a front. Bane charted front, so we're going to be on fives and twos, but they have got nine wounds, so I'm hopeful they will die and I can turn and face off against these damn busters. I do murder the other damn busters, so that's great. Everything's looking good there. The other generals just come round to kind of do some turn five shenanigans. And then over, over on the other flank, I don't make the sensible move. So the sensible move here is this guy doesn't need to fight anymore. He should turn and come this way immediately allowing this charge to just murder the river guard at which point these fanatics are out of the game because they just claim the segment 
I don't. I think I fight because I was so worried. I don't know why I was worried. They won seven wounds. Just didn't think very well. So that's poor play by me. So he doesn't come over yet. So turn five for Andy. This is how it's looking. You can see my general is still there. He has killed it, but mm, should have come over. He's, he's got a hero here. It's looking very good for me. All right, I'm, I'm, but this is a lot. A lot of fast flying stuff. The segment comes to here. Right, roughly, ah, it's a poor drawing. Like that, sort of. Right, so this segment, at the moment, I'm very, very dominant in. I don't kill these guys on my charge, which is poor. I have got my captain here. He's not so much guarding the flank as he's just kind of offering rallying. Ah, there's a lot that can come in, right? So, let's see what happens. So, these river guard come into the... Um, Ensnaring infantry. They have a pathfinder. I missed another flank, so I missed. I didn't turn this general properly. So I'm just, I don't know, just not playing well. Just not playing. I'm really throwing away a great situation. I just needed to turn him just a little bit more, and I didn't. So he gets um, a flank here. They are. These are the guys that shoot. So it's 12 shots, six attacks. But still only 12 attacks. And they're not got a lot of crushing, so it's the flank of my general there. And he also takes the um, little hero into him as well to pin him down. The other hero flies over here, coming to the back of my mage. The sentinel comes into the rear of this. It's a lot of attack, very complex move. So flank, front, rear onto this unit, and they are just going to die. I thought he was going to take my captain. He decided not to. That's fine. I'd rather the captain was left. So obviously they die that was a lot and now he's got a scoring hero this way and a lot of power here so don't like that four wounds though that's not great onto my ensnaring infantry so they're still happy and a waiver that's ah, just general's waiver at the worst times so he's stuck there because he hasn't got indomitable will because i don't know why i think they should get indomitable um, and another waiver. So my wizard is also waiver. So a lot of wavering going on here. So that means that um, I can charge this ensnaring hero in the rear with my horde. I like that. Into my turn five. Clocks are okay. We're doing all right for time. So counter charge. Rear charge. So the general comes into the rear there. That's great. Another unit here though. Um, we charge the hero with my horde. Um, this general now belatedly comes over. Too late, Muggins. Where did this other wizard come from? The other wizard was... Oh, he was over here. So just to kind of protect himself, he comes behind the horde. So he can sort of score. But offers some Bane Chant. Um, and the captain comes into this unit. Why this unit, not this unit? I can't remember. I've got to choose one. I, guess. I think I was going to try and kill them and then sidestep. I can't remember. I can't remember. Important. That's the same thing twice. Oh, no, it's not. It shows that this unit has died. So great. A rear charging general actually does something. Turn to face these guys. Hopefully, I got them in the front. Five wounds on the counter charge on those guys. Not enough, so they're still okay. Which means I'm going to die to this. Uh. That looks like question mark number of wounds on that unit, but he's also not dead, so the horde flubbed it. Four wounds? You suck, guys. That's terrible. Anyway, turn six for the Moonraker. So all sorts, all sorts go off. Um, so, yep, flank and front onto this unit here. As predicted. How did the captain do? Can't see. We'll find that in a bit. Um, so the Dan Buster Sentinel comes into the flank of this hero. This general didn't turn him enough because I suck. Well, he's either going to get flanked here or flanked here. I'd rather get flanked by him. Um, I think the little hero over here... Yeah, two heroes into this general who's already on... I want to say seven wounds. So that's not great for him. He, he'll probably die. Yep, yeah, that's just... Ah, oh, and he does take... So actually, I... Having said, oh, I turned him especially. I didn't even turn him well enough to get 
protective of this. Just playing really badly. I'm, I'm unhappy with myself, right? So I allowed a flank here as well. Which is just rubbish play, isn't it? From me. So he kills my wizard and turns. Looks like they are on, I want to say, nine wounds. Or maybe six wounds. Whatever. Um, so facing my horde, he's now going to attack them on fives. And that unit... Oh, and oh, that's the one general dies from the two heroes. And the other general dies too. So I've lost both my generals. And uh, Andy looking very dominant in the center now. However, however, I did some a uh, measuring. And what we found out was, so the center comes down like this, right, for the, for the scoring units. And this is, oh, I managed to draw it for once without messing it up. Like that. And I believe, is that right? So let's just count. So I've got one unit strength, one unit strength, and four unit strength. So that's six. And Andy's got three, four, five. Yeah, I think that's right. So we looked at this and measured it and realized um, I've walked. Uh, oh, is it one or is it draw? It's a draw for some reason. Are these guys unit strength two? They might because they're flyers. Two, four. Yes, that's right. Yes, five, six. Right, those are the scoring units that added. These guys do not score because they are not 50% in the scoring um, zone. Four, five, six, right? So I've got six. He's got six. It's a draw. Um, so on my turn, what I need to do is I need to kill something and I can win. How exciting. So in I come. The general here flies into this unit here. I charge, I don't charge the horde into this unit because that would put me out of the scoring zone and I can't maneuver it any other way. So they don't charge anyone, they just sit there and it all comes down to, maybe the, maybe the captain charges something as well. I can't remember, let's have a look. Anyway, I'm trying not to spoil it because I did put the double one there. <laughs> but basically, um, this unit was on five wounds, right? It's a 14-16. General charges in, fours and twos. Um, does an extra four wounds on him. Puts him up to nine. I need a re-rollable seven to win the game, and I double won it. And earlier in the game, I'd reused, um, I'd already used my re-roll um, on a waiver, trying to turn it into a kill, and I turned it into a not waiver. So that just goes to show that I'm an idiot. Uh, and it ends in a noble draw. So there we are at the end of the game. So, so the, this Tidal Swarm over here claims this segment. This Fanatics claims this segment. And then right in the middle, I'm going to try and draw this without messing up. Please forgive me if I don't. It's like that. And it's like that. Right, so doesn't count, doesn't count. Two, two, one, one makes six. One, one, and four makes six. So it is a draw. So yeah, there you go. A re-rollable seven away from a victory. But I, you know, I threw this game totally. I had a really strong position at the beginning. I played it pretty well. Um, I allowed a bunch of attacks that I shouldn't have done pretty early. I'm sorry, pretty pretty late on. Um, I allowed flanks that I shouldn't have allowed, but it got very complicated because everything flies. It's so hard to play. Um, but a very noble draw. So at the end of game three. End of day one, I am one win, one draw, one loss. So right in the middle of the pack. Um, yeah, so there we go. So into game, into day two. So day two will be another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was uh, some thrilling games. I then went on to play two more games in the evening because uh, I love it. <laughs> I really enjoyed those games as well. Um, I had five games in one day. It was brilliant. And then I played a drinking game. Poor. We also did a... Uh, Tom's famous Northern Kings pub quiz when we came joint top and then lost in a tiebreaker to John Guns' team. Um, so yeah, that was good fun. Um, that's the end of my battle report for day one of Northern Kings. Please do come back for day two. Day two games, are, day two's games are equally thrilling. We've got a game against Abyss and then a game against Twilight Kin um, again for the final game of the tournament. Come and see how I did, and there's a nice army showcase at the end for uh, video two, which will be coming in a few days. Hope you enjoyed this one. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what you thought I should have done. Tell me why kings and men are so terrible. 
And uh, love you all. And I'll see you for the next one.